Hi everyone, and welcome back to Satoko World Finance Academy. So in our last lesson, we learned about emergency funds. Remember, there are two types of protection funds, right? The first one is a super emergency fund. That's the actual cash that you would have it with you. And my suggestion was between $200 and $500. And then last lesson, we learned about emergency funds. Emergency fund is the basic living cost that you can sustain your living. My suggestion was eight to 12 months. And we are starting to aim three months, right? Have you decided how much money you are going to set aside every paycheck? And this is a financial gym. That's where we are in right now. There are five categories to a financial gym. First, get to know your money. And then second, reduce and get rid of debts. Third, protect your money. Fourth, let your money protect you. And then fifth, let your money make money. So uh, last, maybe that three lessons ago, we talk about you know tracking our money and records your money. Do you remember? Progress equals happiness. And in order to have our progress, we have to have three steps. First, decision. We made a decision to take control of our financial health. Second, we're going to act. So we starting to act, right? To look at our uh, transactions daily. Third, measure. We starting to record our transaction. So today, we're going to talk about where to park emergency fund. Yes, we already have decided to have emergency fund and how much emergency fund we are going to have, right? And so this was about protect your money. Sorry, the let your money protect you, right? And today, it's about protecting, protecting your money. So we have to know um, where to park our money, this emergency fund, and we have to make sure your money is safe. Let's put it this way. When you park your car, you know, on the street or in the parking lot, we make sure um, it's safe to park, right? We don't want to get tickets and we don't want to, you know, worse than getting told, right? So we make sure that we pay for it and make sure it is our car, car is safe while we are gone, right? So as our money do, we must know where we park is a safe spot. Anything could happen. One time I consulted with one of my friends. Uh, he actually came uh, to see me for investment advice, but it turned out he had lots of money in one bank. And to me, I said to him, it's dangerous. Don't have that much money in one bank. And he laughed at it. He said, when would this bank would go bankrupt? Well, I said to him, anything could happen. COVID happened. <laughs> so I want everybody to park your emergency fund in a safe spot. And I want you to have right information, right knowledge as well, all right? And we're going to talk about insurance for the money. And I want you to have this knowledge. Some people might say, I don't have that much money, so I don't need to know. Yes, you do need to know. <laughs> we must know how, how safe our money is, all right? So this is the insurance about money. So my knowledge is based on uh, the, the Canadian financial uh, knowledge, but I did some research for the US as well. So we're going to um, you know, talk about, compare more like for the differences as well, okay? So you know, for Canada, the insurance company for the bank is CDIC. It is the Canada Deposit Insurance Corporation. For US, it's FDIC. It is the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. So those uh, insurance company is the uh, protecting the bank in case if they go bankrupt. And these companies only protect the cash money. So if you have investment like bonds or uh, the stock, that won't cover it, okay? So that's a different insurance company that would cover for that investment company, okay? So we're going to talk about just cash money for the bank, 
All right. And I'm gonna start from Canada side, okay? For CDIC, it covers up to $100,000 each category. And I'm gonna explain about this category things. So this category, what I mean is uh, we have individual account, right? We have the account just on our name. And we have sometimes joint account. You may have it with your significant others, right? So those accounts, um, it covers individually up to $100,000. So individual account, you might have checking account, saving account, and so as GIC, it covers it. So, but it's a total of it, okay? For individual and joint account. So if you have individual account, total checking and saving and GIC about $100,000. And also if you had joint account with your significant others, the combined total $100,000, your money is 100% protected. You would still get $200,000. But if you have $200,000 on individual account, and if you had, uh, let's say, $100,000 on a joint account combined, you would only get $200,000, although individual account had $200,000. You know, okay, I hope you got it. And then registered account. I'm talking about um, RSP, TFSA, RESP, you know, those registered account. So, each separately, it covers $100,000, okay? And trust, that's another $100,000. And also the purpose of paying property tax. You know, if you have mortgage through the bank, the bank might save a property tax for you. You pay every month and they keep it for you. And you know, when once a month, once, sorry, once, once a year, when you have to pay the property tax, the money comes from there. So that's a separate $100,000, okay? So that was for CDIC. And now moving on to US. So that's FDIC. So FDIC covers up to $250,000 each. So again, each category. So individual account and joint account separately, you know, checking account, saving account combined, and, but for US, for FDIC, they don't cover GIC, okay? So just checking account, saving account, and separately, individual and joint account. And then the registered account, this is something different uh, from the Canadian side. So in Canada, that was each separately, but for US, it's all combined. You might have IRA, Roth IRA, it's all combined, not separately. So that's a different one. But again, it's $250,000, okay? And then the trust, up to $250,000, and business account, up to $250,000. So those are the insurances for the banks, all right? And if you, have, if you use major banks, they are covered by those insurance companies, okay? But if you use minor banks, you might wanna go to their website and scroll down to the bottom to make sure you would see CDIC for Canada or FDIC for US. And this is just for the banks. So credit union doesn't count. So it is just for banks, okay? Now, exactly where can we park our emergency funds? So I want to be specific about where to park, okay? So it is up to six months of the emergency fund. So after a certain amount of money, um, I'm going to talk about in an investment video where you could park your emergency fund. But this is up to six months. You want to have access, like immediate access in case something happened and in case if you get laid off, if you need money, actual cash money. All right, so in order to find out where to park, we have to get to know your checking account first. <laughs> so are you paying the monthly fee for your checking account? And so sometimes you may be paying some fees, but it could be waived. So second question is, can you avoid paying fees? So my checking account, my personal checking account, 
if I maintain $5,000 monthly fees waived, so my first $5,000 of the uh, emergency fund is parked in the checking account, so I don't have to pay for the monthly fee. That's just, you know, I don't wanna pay any monthly fee. So if I didn't have $5,000 in my account, I have to pay $29.99 every month. I don't wanna pay that. So that's the first part that you have to find out if you need to maintain certain amount in order to waive the fee, okay? And then after that, the second part is to find the best interest rate saving. You know, right now the bank, regular bank, high interest rate in Canada, my bank that I use is 0.50%. That's so sad. And it, it's actually got better. It got double. <laughs> but um, So I wanted to introduce a few places. It's just my suggestion, okay? And I did some research and I wanted to give you a suggestion to where you could park, okay? So I live in Ontario, Canada. So this is only for the residents of um, um, Ontario, Canada. But those people who are watching, this may be a good place to park because it's higher, much higher interest rate. And the um, credit union that I personally use is called Seven Financial. And they give 2.85%. And it is pretty good, Seven Financial. and Another credit union that I actually found out today, and I may switch it, I have to look into it further, but it's called DUCA Credit Union. They actually pays 3.25%. It says promotional rate, but there is no limit to how long. But yeah, I might actually look into this credit union. So again, credit union is not covered by the CDIC or FDIC. For Canada, credit union is regulated by each province. So each province is different, but in Ontario, um, credit union, uh, it is covered up to $250,000, okay? So you might wanna check into um, different provinces where you live and all that to how much um, your money will be protected, all right? And now for all Canadian residents, and this may be a good part, uh, to park and this is for people who have TFSA amount available and each registered account I will go through it but for now just listen through it TFSA so it's called staying back credit union TFSA account and they pay 2.65 percent so those seven financial and DUCA credit union, those are non-registered account, meaning I have to pay a tax on the interest I gain. So TFSA, you don't have to pay tax on the interest you gain. So that's the difference with a non-registered account and TFSA account, okay? But TFSA, there is a limit to how much you can contribute every year, all right? So now, for US residents, and this is the credit union that I would recommend. Um, it's actually um, uh, Susie Oman, uh, financial advisor, she talked about this credit union and I think it's a good idea as well. And it's called Alliant Credit Union. And their interest rate is 1.2%. However, if you deposit $100 minimum monthly and maintain $100 after 12 months, they're going to give you $100 bonus. And in the end, it becomes 16% APY. That's annual percentage yield. And that's, you know, pretty, pretty good. After 12 months, 16% interest you gain. And so for credit union, there is a membership fee. So Alliant Credit Union, I believe it's $5. And for Seven Financial in Canada, the one I use, I pay $30 on one-time membership fee. So this is my suggestion. And of course, you can look into it and where you might wanna park your emergency funds. But yeah, I don't want you to pay any fee for the bank if you don't have to. And then I want you to take advantage of a um, better interest rate for your emergency funds. 
up to six months. This is okay. So today's lesson was where to park your emergency fund. Thank you for watching, guys. And if you want to work with me and expedite your financial health, please contact me at Satoko World at Outlook.com. So I'll see you guys in 10 days and let's start wealthy and we'll be wealthier. Bye, guys.